Next, Ho-Chunk Inc., the Economic Development Corporation of the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska, employs over 1,000 people in 10 states and four foreign countries. Back in 1994, it had only one employee, visionary Lance Morgan, president and CEO of the corporation. On this morning at the National Congress of American Indians Mid-Year Conference in Lincoln, Ho-Chunk Inc. President and CEO Lance Morgan makes a presentation on strategies for protecting and enhancing Indian commerce on reservations, a topic he knows very well. So if there's a tribe in the middle of nowhere, a uh, small gaming operation, how do they diversify their economy? What you have to do is look at your advantages as a tribe, you know, and some of them are, are so good. You know, you have some tax advantages, you pass your own laws, um, you, have, you, you can't be sued, you have some state tax advantages on the reservation. Now, those advantages have already existed, but the tribes haven't been structured very well to, 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 to exploit them. So if you can create sort of these organic structures um, and, and figure out ways to deal with it locally, to put in place a system um, that minimizes some of the negatives but maximizes the positive, you have a real chance. The other thing that's out there is if you're in a rural area, you can, some of these advantages aren't dependent upon location. Um, government contracting, we do stuff all over the world. You know, you would not, we sold a satellite uh, to the Mexican government um, last year. Um, I mean, who'd have thought that would happen, right? <laughs> and, um, and so you're not limited to by a geography in some, in some of the stuff. The other thing that's going on is, is the states have been highly restricted to tribes. They control who you deal with. And so they can't tell you a tribe what to do, and we sort of like that. Um, and if they tried, we probably wouldn't do it. But they can tell everybody you deal with in the economic stream what to do. The internet has changed that a little bit. Um, what it's done is jump the normal state control mechanism. So there's a whole new world emerging uh, um, that's financial, that's regulatory oriented, and the states are struggling with, with how to control that. And there's hope now where there was none before. The Winnebago Reservation in Nebraska is not unlike many reservations across Indian country. And the success of the nation is due to many factors, not just one. You have to understand the problems of developing on a reservation are very, very hard. Um, but what the Winnebago tribe did is they looked back and said, hey, we've, these problems are, this, we, we face the same problems over and over again. What if we created an entity that sort of upfront dealt with those problems and gave us our best chance of success, and then we could sort of evolve. And what's happened is, is we're sort of a, a tortoise. We get a little bit smarter, we go a little bit faster, we grow, we're steady. And we've created an entity with some stability, with some institutional knowledge that allows us to learn one business and move on. Ho-Chunk Inc. started in 1994 in the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska. Um, I was their lawyer. Um, we had got gaming and we had a little bit of extra money for once. Uh, our, our discretionary budget was $184,000 uh, the year before. And uh, we were doing well in gaming, but competition was authorized in the cities. And basically our gaming got wiped out, 90% drop a few years uh, later. But the tribe took some money, millions of dollars, and set it up into, to, in, and use the money to set up Ho-Chunk Inc. And our job was as quickly as possible to diversify our economy away from gaming. And our first year I was an employee and we had $400,000 in revenue. I remember thinking that was pretty good. Last year we had 1,400 employees and we're in five other countries and our revenues, non-gaming, were 227 million. And you have to imagine a town with 65% unemployment, 1,500 people, what dropping a sort of international corporate entity in town does for a rural place like that. Lance, how did you get involved or how did you get into tribal economic development? Um, I suppose it's, it, it goes back to my youth. I could listen to my parents talking to their friends about what was happening at the tribe. And I was just sort of listening, you know, the way a kid would. And uh, I'd been very involved in my dad's small business. And so I, business seemed very simple to me. And I was wondering, why would they do that? And uh, I, I thought, well, if, if I could just somehow do something, um, it, it would make sense. When I got to college, I started studying business. Um, I focused on economic development issues on the reservation just to study, just because it was sort of a hobby. I never thought I'd actually do it. When I went to law school, I wrote a, my third year thesis on strategies for economic development on the reservation in 1993 is when I graduated. Gaming took off in 92-ish. And so a new field was emerging called corporate Indian law. And I could not, it was like a dream come true for me. 
With a background in both tribal law and business, Lance offers insight into the evolving world of tribal commerce that goes beyond gaming. He also questions the role of the federal government. Gaming is, is incredible. You know, we, we, I mentioned this, we lived in this really terrible economic system um, that was designed to sort of exploit from us, and it, and it limited us. We didn't have some of the, the skill sets you needed even to participate in business. Then gaming came along, and, and it basically created economic activity and revenue and profits where none had been before. And um, it's wonderful, and, but you have to look at it as an opportunity, not an end. And the tribes realized that, hey, this gravy train might be over someday, and so we better diversify. And I think that's wise. There's nothing that we've ever had as, as a tribes of value that has not been taken by the political, the legal, or the economic system in some way. And why would gaming really be any different? Um, the problem we face is that the U.S. federal court system isn't Indian at all. There's not a single Indian as a district court, a circuit court, or a circuit court judge or a Supreme Court judge. And so these people lack perspective. And when it comes down to it, they rule against us almost every time. And so a system that you never win isn't really our system, right? It's a system that, that exploits from us. And it's amazing how many rules from the economic landscape that were crafted by nine people on the Supreme Court who know nothing about us and our challenges. And so if you're just clever and you can make an argument, then you take something from us. And so we live in a world where the entire legal system is sort of designed to exploit us. And so you're a fool if, if you think that's your system. And we're not fools, right? And so what we do is we strive to find ways to develop tribal law. Federal Indian law is restrictive in nature. Tribal law, where we create our own rules, our own laws, is expansive in nature. It steps on a few toes sometimes, but what's our alternative? You know, doing nothing and being the good Indian, you know, that doesn't get you anywhere.